we are going to be doing goal setting to the now, building your GPS with Jenny Wallach. Um, some of you know Jenny, for those of you who don't, I'll just tell you a little bit about her. She's a top performing real estate agent with Keller Williams and is a CEO of her very own real estate group in Tulsa, Oklahoma. She was in the inaugural class of QL with Gary Keller in 2015 and has taught many classes in Tulsa since. Also, as a Keller Williams University certified trainer, she gets to live her mission and empower agents and our youth to live their best lives. Jenny has a deep understanding of what is required to bring your vision to life and is passionate about helping others reach their goals. Uh, something I learned about Jenny recently is that she completed the New York City Marathon, which is awesome, especially, I mean, that's, that's a bucket list item for everyone. I actually kind of want to show you um, I just want to show you her after she finished her race. Um, she completed the New York City Marathon. This was like a couple weeks ago. I had a little bit of difficulty getting a hold of her and she was like, honey, I'm recovering from a race. I was like, wait, you did a whole 26 miles. Let me like put your feet up, get in the bath, like do something like, don't talk to me. You need to rest. Um, so that's a huge accomplishment and it's something that she could not have done without the tools that she learned. Uh, during QL. And the great thing about that is that she was able to build a GPS so that way she could build out her training plan, um, which allowed her to remove her limiting beliefs. She had an accountability coach with her running and completed the race with a huge smile on her face. Yeah, hey. I might have been faking for that part, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jenny. Hi there. How Hi. are you guys? I'm great. How are you? I am super and so honored to be a part of sharing with you guys. Is it all right if I don't pay attention to the Zoom chat and you guys are on top of it for me? Absolutely. Of course. Cool. I want to focus on one thing. You know, there's a book on. <laughs> <laughs> there is a book about that, isn't there? <laughs> well, if you guys are ready for me to get going, let's do this. All right. Well, yay. So thank you so much. What an honor to share with you guys in the QL community. Um, I even shared this on my Facebook because everything is so intertwined. And, and, Gary, and Brandy, you know, because when we got to hang out with Gary this summer, he shared with us that really everything started with QL, Quantum Leap, his course. If you are a student of all these things, you know that the personal perspectives are a part of QL, as well as this book totally came from QL. Um, and a part of a company that provides all of these productivity and mindset and success tools for us. So we don't have to re go reinvent the wheel. I am now in my 18th year of real estate and I have I'm about to be, no, let's, let's back up. I'm not going to say that yet. I'm 46 years young at this point. And I was going to say next year's birthday, but we're not even going there. And um, I've just learned a lot because right now my age is probably like two of you guys like put together. And um, this is perfect timing for me because Brittany Winery here, she's on my team and here in Tulsa, she is also a teacher with me of QL for young adults and we are teaching on Saturday. So thank you Yay. for my uh, pre-teaching homework. So today's topic, Jay sent out to you was goal setting to the now and then your GPS. And I don't know about you guys, we know that there's these great tools. We get all pumped up and inspired to use them and then it becomes too much work that we just don't look at it again. Does anyone else ever struggle with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Well, I'm, I'm guilty of it as well. And so what I learned over the past couple years was to really take time for yourself to really do thinking about your big, amazing life someday some, somewhere, somehow, what it would look like in the future. And a lot of the tools that I'm going to share with you guys today came from, I'm a member of the One Thing community, because once I became a fan of the One Thing book, I started eating up everything. So I 
listen to the podcast. And if you guys have done that as well, you know, there's great content there. And then Jeff also has Jeff Woods of the one um, has the um, community that you can join. So for a certain dollar amount per year, you get all these tools and training and webinars and such good goodness. So what I'm sharing with you guys today is what I learned from him, but it changed my life when it came to thinking big and then chunking it down to my right now, what I need to be doing. Is that why you guys are here today? Learn all that. Awesome. Well, I would think that most of you are QL graduates or familiar with the, the material that we teach in QL. And I have my book here because this is the section where goal setting to the now starts. And Gary says, purpose without priority is powerless. And it's the analogy of the um, iceberg. And so we see all of our results up here. And what we don't see is our purpose that's under the water and really the foundation for all of our, all of our, our growth and our success. So what you see is determined by what you don't see. And so then we get into the toolkit. And this is where I feel like, at least when I'm teaching QL or when I'm teaching six personal perspectives that we, and then I heard someone chimed in that they kind of, they covered some of this in bold. And sometimes we can give you the overall idea of it and you don't get the time to go deep on it. And so that's what we'll do here today. I know Jay shared with you um, a pre-call assignment and you guys had the seven circles. That was from my recommendation because this totally changed my way of thinking when it came to building out my GPS and then my 411 and then my what in the heck am I supposed to be doing right this minute goal. <laughs> and so what I would like for you guys to do is you already went through your seven circles, everyone. Okay, I can see a few of you. So give me a, yeah, we did that. Okay, cool. Yay, thank you. So if you didn't get to this part of your exercise yet, just take some notes so that you can come back and really reflect. So whenever you look at these seven circles of your life, and this is from page 114 in The One Thing. Look at my book. You think I have a few tabs going on? <laughs> So this is what Jeff had mentioned that he learned from Jay Papazan because Jeff Woods of the one thing president, he answers to Gary and Jay and there, don't you think that they want Jeff to be the most productive that he can be? So Jay said to Jeff, okay, he was getting struggling on how to come up with his big goals or, or the ideas around it. And so he said, we'll take these seven circles and here's just the exercise I'm going to share with you guys. Take your seven circles that you guys have on a printout and then take seven pieces of paper, blank pieces of paper. So this is a project you'll get to work on later because we don't have time to wait for you to go through this because didn't this take a lot more time than you thought it would already? Yeah. So on each of those seven pieces of paper at the top of each page, write spiritual life, physical health, personal life, go around and each page will have each of these categories. And then you are going to ask yourself in each of these categories, what matters most to me? What do I want my life to look like in each of these categories? So I think you probably got to brainstorm a little bit on these from the instructions you got in the pre-homework assignment. But basically we want you to dream big and think big beyond anything you ever have ever dreamt of or thought of. So that's one thing you'll get to do after today. But for today, let's get back to you got to think big, you got to envision your seven circles and what your life can look like in each, at each category. And then you got to think through what's the one thing and, and the focusing question. So I'm gonna just fast forward then to say that where we are in the process at this point is there's goal setting to the now which helps you build your GPS. 
your GPS helps you build your 411, then your 411 is consisted of your one goal that's going to have your monthly and your weekly and then your daily goals. So do you see how you think way big with your someday goals and it funnels all the way down and all of them are measurable and achievable. You can hit them by crossing them off and seeing the results. So I wanna read this that I, I gathered last night when I was doing my research. So the purpose of a goal is to be appropriate in the moment. So who is the person that I need to become to earn the right to achieve these goals? What are all the roles that you currently play in your life? Whether it's wife or mother or business owner, think through those and, and is there anything missing? Are there places you need to plus? Are there places you need to show up a little better, a little more? And now put those in order of priority. You know, what really, really matters most? And then you can use those to think through and give some great I am statements about yourself. This is just a little exercise to give you some awareness around what matters most because we're all at different places in our life. We all have different priorities and some of them feel equally important right now, don't they? You get pulled in different directions. And what does Gary say? You're just, you know, there's not, no multitasking. You're just doing a lot of things really bad. So when it comes to the thinking real big, like you guys have already done, um, goal setting to the now is going to help you get clarity on how to build our GPS. And again, it trickles all the way down. So give me some examples of things that you thought about when it came to uh, different categories. What were things that mattered most in your physical health? If anyone would like to share. I can't see things, so let's see. I can share, Jen. So um, I would say that, um, like, when I think about my physical health and I start thinking about those goals, um, part, of, part of my thing is that I want to be the strongest that I've ever been and that I want to focus on not just being, um, it, like, I see physical health as part, partially kind of wrapped into my spiritual health as well because it means being mentally and physically strong and what that can look like and so I do have some like specific goals about what I want to accomplish with that strength but that's what I really start to embody. yeah I love that so now you can see that whatever you set for your big goal of being strong you can apply something to it that helps mm -hmm. you be strong Right. That becomes something that becomes measurable. So we'll get yeah. in, so we'll get into details about what that exactly looks like. Kayla added um, she would like to be more disciplined in her regimen and make sure she's putting time on her calendar. Uh, going along, like to piggyback on what she said, something that I added was like a specific number. So like for example, if I can do like, not that I can do a chin up, um, but if I could do chin ups and I could do like five of them, maybe my goal for this month is going to be to make it to eight, something like that. Right, right. And then you can actually reflect and review and see where am I and what did I do? Now, I'm just, I don't know about you guys, but I'm always in the struggle of being the most productive I can be. And I bounce between a paper calendar, a notebook for just notes of meetings and ideas, my phone with all of our Google and um, calendar as a team. Do you guys struggle with all the different ways and places that you have all your thoughts and ideas? Yes. It's okay because I've been doing this for a really long time and from the outside it would appear that I'm kind of got it figured out when really I don't. You know I'm failing forward all over the place. And so use what tool works for you. 
don't go with the shiniest object or the newest thing. If you're a paper person, make it be a paper calendar. And mine ended up being a combo of things. And I just carry them all around with me because that keeps me productive. But what, ha what really helped me with Jeff and his ideas for um, the one thing, I'll first share with you the template. So right now, you guys are at a place where you have your ideas inside of your seven circles. And then later on, you're going to take seven pieces of paper, right? So we're going with this is what your assignment's going to be. And on your seven piece of paper, so this one says physical. This is actually from 2018. I locked myself into my uh, bedroom office at home and I took half of a day to go through all of this. So please take time. So you'll be able to, at the end of today, you'll time block your calendar <laughs> to come back so you can better time block your life. <laughs> And so whenever you have this one idea, you have all these seven pages, and then you're going to go and really star the most important or the most two important or the most three. So on this physical, I had an exercise, push myself, get stronger, set big goals and don't back off them, balanced meals and low low carb, no junk meals. So this was my brain dump of how I could have the physical body that I desired. Those are the ideas that I had. Well, I picked one to be the most important and the starred one is push myself, so outside my comfort zone, and get stronger. Kind of like Brandy mentioned, because when you get to over 40, you could still be a thin looking person that appears to be fit and inside you're not the strong person that you know you should be. That's what happened, sorry guys, you got a while to go, but just wait. And because of me writing this down, when I run into a person in California as I'm teaching a class and I have a conversation with him and I learned that he is a marathon running coach and he asked me some questions and then he shares with me that he loves helping people become the, their, their best selves then it was very easy because I had already thought big about my physical self that it was very easy for him to say I see a marathoner in you to a person who has not run over five steps in the last <laughs> many, 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 many years that just on November 3rd, Jay shared that I ran the New York City Marathon and less than a year ago is when I met him. So not that I'm encouraging you to go run a marathon, I'm encouraging you to think really big because you can surprise yourself. Because I survived, look, I'm here. <laughs> so that's what's possible when you think big and then you pull all of the tools that our company in, in these books and these classes teach us, putting accountability with it and mindset and, and documenting all of this. So this, this is what this is all about. So that's what allowed me to think really big. So before I knew that, I was still just working on my, my goal setting to the now. So here is a document that I'll share with you. Um, Okay, let's see. I think I need to do something real quick. I need to exit full screen. There we go. Okay. This is um, goal setting to the now template. Can you guys see this? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is how simple it is. I downloaded this because I'm a member of that one thing community, but do you think you could snap a picture of that and just make it yourself? <laughs> yes. Pretty sure you can. So if you look, you've got your someday professional goals and they picked a date out in the future. So I, that's where Jay used the example of 30 years from now or, or whatever number you want to pick out into the future. And then 
you have, so that's the goal. You have a category and then four goals under each. So you guys got the idea. And they're gonna do the same with your personal goals. And now you're gonna to go to your five-year professional goals. Five-year personal goals. You get where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. One year professional, one year personal. So those are the pages that you need. So remember you had your seven pages of each category. You starred the most important ones in each of those seven. And now you're going to start at the top and say, okay, I dreamt of my physical self to look like this in 30, in 2037. So what would three different categories be in your professional goals and your personal goals? So the way I think of it is, so of those seven circles, let's just name them. If you have your piece of paper here, spiritual life, would that fit into professional or personal? Personal. No. Yeah. For your physical health, your personal, your personal life in your personal, your key relationships in your personal, and then your job, your business, your finances, those all fit into your professional goals. So you can see that from the seven circles, you thought big, you came up with a couple key goals inside of each one, and now put them here. Now this is where you just can't be overcritical of yourself because what I have from my time of working on this is literally chicken scratch. You can't be per a perfectionist about this. This is brainstorming. You're gonna just throw down and plop things into certain places. So for me, right here where it says someday professional goals, I'm a real estate professional. I have a business, I have a team, I lead the team. And so my category, first category was business slash job in my professional goals. And then some ideas that I had for goals would be, this is someday goals, remember? Um, seventh level, which means I'm gonna hire and leverage myself to get out of the production piece. Um, and I put things that needed to happen for that to happen. Like I needed to be netting $500,000 a year for me to, to, for that to happen. So that's measurable. Um, I put that I would be profitable. So I need to define what profitable looks like. Um, then I talk about expansion to other markets or other areas. So again, this is just brainstorming, thinking really big, what could life look like someday? Another category that I have here was um, other businesses. So what are other ways that I can make money? Um, I'm a Keller Williams University instructor. Now I can travel, train, and, and do what I love while getting paid. Um, I can travel and teach other things. I could be a speaker. I could um, be a coach. So I just thought of other, what are other ways for me to make money working in a job or a business? And then the third category, I put wealth building. So what are some of these ways, some of the ways here that I can still earn money, but maybe it's more passive income. So things like rental properties or commercial buildings, maybe a market center ownership or um, um, other ways, you know, profit share, whatever a different goal is. And you can build all those out to have monetary or measurable ways to keep up with if you're hitting these. So remember, these are my big, Harry, someday goals. And then you're gonna do it again for your personal. So examples here, I had family, friends. That's one of my categories. So what are things that I can do with my family and friends in a perfect world in the future? That would be frequent girl, girl, night, girl night out, girls night out with friends, with um, family traveling and um, spending time together. And then I had health and spiritual. So that's where you can put those things with your, um, how you're gonna take care of your, your, your person. And then lastly, I put yeah, um, hobbies. So for example, hobbies and travel. So if you like to play sports of any kind or travel. So that, I'm not gonna go through each of these. That was just me diving deep to give you examples and ideas.
So you see how I took the seven circles, what matters most inside of those, and just plopped them onto my professional and personal Sunday goals. And then you're gonna just filter them down and filter them down. And now what do you get to do when you have one year goals? You get to make a GPS. So that is where we are at the GPS. So from um, Quantum Leap is the one that I have here. You guys have seen this before. So this is the, um, the one that you've seen before and it's very simple. We know that the G stands for goal. So that's your big annual goal and we're gonna have three priorities and five strategies in each one. I am a GPS 135 fanatic. I have them, let me make sure my Wi-Fi is, do you guys, am I good on Wi-Fi? Okay, looked like it was unstable for a sec. So I use a GPS for not only my business planning for my team, our team GPS is three pages. I can share that with you guys later, what goes into that. I have one personally that I'm working off of as I'm sharing here with you guys. And then the beauty of a GPS is it's the most amazing way to brainstorm any idea that you have. Any event that we think of for our team. So a Pi Day, we're about to have one. And is that a great way to use a GPS? What's the goal? Successful Pi Day. And then I would chunk it down to before, during, and after. So what are the things that need to happen before the Pi Day, during the Pi Day, after the Pi Day? And then you can assign people to who is responsible for each of those things. Isn't that a fun way to utilize the GPS? So what I did was I, I had everything we've already gone over. I had my one year, then I got to my one year of just brainstorming, and then you put it into a GPS. And that's just exactly what you see here on the screen. Mine's just more chicken scratched. And so what I came up with was for my annual goal, I am in real estate. So for me, a goal usually relates to money. I don't know about you guys, but in our profession, it's either a number of families that you're gonna help or dollars that you're gonna make because that's really measurable. The numbers don't lie. So that's what mine actually looks like. It says the number, the amount of GCI that the team will make. And then each of the priorities I have, again, like we talked about, as I kept working through all of what mattered to me, what was reoccurring theme was that if I hire, train, and hold my team accountable, everything else becomes easier or unnecessary. And now isn't that the focusing question is what matters most? And what I figured out was for my team to hit this big gross income number, priority one was that if I properly hire, train, and hold my team accountable by showing up as a good leader, and keeping everyone on track that everything else becomes easier. So some of my strategies were attract talent, hire, follow the process, um, leverage leadership to other people who can help me, hold and attend events to engage with other businesses and agents, get involved with our local chamber of commerce, commerce and leadership, and have an onboarding system and training curriculum for my team. So if I properly, if I nail everything inside of that, attract talent to my team, train them at a high level and hold them accountable, hire the right people, we should be able to achieve that goal. What I learned about the GPS is that although there's three priorities, each one should be able to hit that goal without the other two. So is each priority powerful enough that if you only had to do one, 
that that would knock it out of the park. And then the other two, those are back up if you don't quite get there. So another priority that I had was that um, train and travel and teach because whenever I, my passion that I discovered through QL is that I love empowering other agents and sharing my passion for helping people and all the systems that we've created. And so that's my passion. And so I want to intertwine that into my business. So if I can, now that's why I'm a QL instructor, I'm a, I'm a KW, I'm sorry, I'm a um, Keller Williams University instructor as well, because now I can go do what I love, help other people, and then get paid to do it, and then get referrals generated back to my team. So 30% of our team's production this year has come from out-of-town agent referrals because I've been purposeful about adding value to all my agent friends across the country so that when they think of Tulsa, Oklahoma, they think of us. So is that helping fuel and fund my big goal? So that's connected. And so then I list all the ways that I can, can um, succeed that way. And then I put my third priority, and this may sound a little fluffy, but this one is the category that I did put in my friends, my family, my hobbies, my travel, my spiritual, my health. These are all my personal. Because what I have learned is that if we are not a whole person, we are a mess. So you can be knocking it out of the park in your business world. And if you are having a terrible home life, if you're not taking care of your body or your mind or your family, that you will crumble you will crash. And so for me, me traveling and having family time and date nights and things that, you know, this is where I had, you know, have a trainer or a coach to keep me strong. So that's the accountability when it comes to my health. All of those matter because as Gary said, if we don't have our body, we don't have a business. It is equally as important as all of the business goals that we have. So we have to prioritize that. So that is what mine ended up looking like. Again, chicken scratch, you can't be a perfectionist on this. This is just like your mission statement. You can't be married to this. You just gotta, you gotta date it, you gotta figure it all out. Let me see if I can get you guys big again. Well. Can you see me? Can you still see my, you can still see my screen, I bet. I don't know how to get this back. I think it, I lost everybody. Hold on. There we go. Did I stop? gone there okay sorry see te technical difficulties there all good now okay cool all right so i shared with you guys that i had all of this and then now guess what you have you have a gps and it can change and it can evolve and that's okay and then the cool thing is that the next tool that I know you guys know about, and I know you're not using it every week because you admit it to me all the time, is the 411. And so you've got your 411, remember from our, from our book here, you guys understand the 411. Well, you just made your GPS, you've got your annual goal, goals. Now, how awesome is it that all of these goals fit into your 411 because what's at the top of your 411 your annual goals and what goes into that we've got our business and our job and our personal and inside of your personal you could have your personal finances so all of those seven circles the thoughts that you had and you funneled it down and you ended up with your your GPS they all fit into your 411. Does that make sense? Do you guys have clarity around how cool this is? 
<laughs> it all just fits together. And today isn't about the 411, but I feel like it's equally important to the GPS because you can have that big goal priorities and strategies that you kind of brainstorm and think about, but this is the 411 is what keeps you on track that you're doing it all along the way. So for example, on my 411 at the top, I already know what all the goals are. And then you just, again, chunk them down to what does this month look like? And what does this, these, this week inside of this month look like? And then you know, when you get into the month and you reflect. So for me, every Sunday at seven o'clock on my calendar, every Sunday it's time blocked for me to review. It, it pops up, it reminds me, review 411, how am I doing? So if I go to my 411 and I go, okay, I was supposed to run three times last week and I only did two and I didn't get in the right amount of miles. Holy crap, I have to get on track this week. That did really happen to me many times. <laughs> so if you're tracking your business numbers, if you know that you must talk to X amount of people per day, that's a number. Did you do it? If you didn't, you get to add it to the next week. You're always just adding and subtracting along the way to make sure that it builds up to the month and then up to the year. And guess what's the most important thing in all of this? Accountability. Somebody that is saying, how are you doing on this? Because aren't we the first people to let ourselves off the hook? <laughs> For sure. Well, do you guys have any overview idea questions that I can help with in getting some more clarity on this? I was just going to say that I feel like that was uh, really great, Jenny. And um, one of my questions that I was going to ask was kind of what you just said, but it was like, what what do you feel like in your history with the GPS and with setting goal setting um, has really helped you be the most successful? Like when you see it in your mind that it has really happened and it's been very successful, what are like the top one or two things that you think really helped you get there? I really think that if you look at the past two years of my business and my life, there's been more of a trajectory. I had been on a slow path and I've had a bigger trajectory and it's because I time blocked during the holidays or during quiet time when I had the time I really time blocked to think through all of this and you guys just reread the one thing just start back through it and I know some people get so annoyed because it asks the same question over and over and over and over again yeah that's the point he wants you to read it I actually love it because I I listen to it on um, audible and it is monotonous and it is so true we have to really get down to so for me as a real estate agent when I got super purposeful and I realized that guess what hiring training and recruiting to my team what how what, how do I do that what do I have to do talk to people so it all goes back to lead generation and making contacts and having conversations with people which is the number one job of a real estate agent or any human really seems like. So I would think the trajectory has been that I took the time to really think through it and then I shared it with a coach. Yeah. That's great. We have a couple of questions in our chat box. Uh, the first. Taylor. Taylor's um, getting a spanking by the way. What? Why? How? Oh, because she hasn't read it. Oh. It's sitting right in front of her. Oh. <laughs> awesome. um, Kathy has requested that you repeat the information on the 411. Okay. Am I saying that? Or not Kathy, Katie. I, I am so sorry. Katie. Hi, Katie. 
Um, 411 is what comes after you've created your GPS. And the 411 is a productivity tool where you have your one annual goal at the top and then you have the month. So if you were a paper person, you would have 12 pieces of paper because for one year, you have 12 months in a year. And then at the bottom of each, you have it divided into four weeks. I know if you search online in KW Connect, in any of your resources with our QL stuff, you will find lots of tools on this. If you go to the one thing.com, that's the number one in the URL, um, you go to free stuff and the, they have a long one there. So yeah. you can download that one. Awesome. And also guys, if you're interested, if you're real estate agents, um, you can even ask, I have a closed Facebook group that's just for agents. It's called Your Journey with Jenny. And I share all this kind of stuff in there. So you could even ask to join that group and then I can let you in and you can search and I've got everything in here too. Any other questions? Did I just nail it? You guys are like, wow, that was so amazing. We do have a question from Brandon. He asked, uh, can you please share your key relationship goals in your GPS? Oh, great, great, great. So key relationships to me, let's see what I wrote down. So to me, my key relationships were my husband, my daughter, and, and friends and family. So whenever I was setting goals around those, it's like, okay, so what can I do with my husband to be more purposeful and have a great life? Well, that was date nights that always happen. With my daughter, um, I pick her up from school every day. So that's time blocked on my calendar that I have time with her and also take her along traveling with me whenever I go teach classes. With girlfriends, you just have to make yourself, I don't know if you guys get too busy, you never get to hang out with your friends anymore, so you have to be purposeful. And then family. I am such a busybody, focused, focused person that my family will say, Sunday, let's all come over and hang out. And I'm like, uh, wait, I have to do that <laughs> because connecting with our family is important. Is that just me? No. <laughs> I think too, Jenny, I see, um, I think it's, it all goes back to time blocking, you know, On your what are those time blocks. That's what I hear you saying is that you're putting time blocks for all those things that matter most to you. So yes. Yes. That out, yes. right. Yes. So actually, if you kept going in your book after this isn't what we we're supposed to cover today, but it all still goes together. If you keep going, Gary, you've got your calendar and you fit all of these goals inside of it. So for me, the perfect life of a real estate agent is, I mean, this is really on my calendar right now. What time I wake up, I have coffee, I think, I, I meditate, I pray, I have all my mindset and account and, and affirmations. I get up and I exercise in some form. Then I get myself ready. I make myself a smoothie. It's really de detailed. I wake up my daughter, we leave the house by this time. I get to the office by this time. I lead generate two hours blocked. I have a time to eat lunch. And then I know that the afternoon is filled up with things like this for me now or appointments or if I've done my one thing, I can go to the mall if I choose to, right? So yeah. whenever you are looking at your 411, the week before to reflect back. For example, something that would be on mine was that I need to shoot a video with a, a local business person. That's something that helps me build our local presence here in town. Well, crap, I haven't done that all month. So who can I text right away or who can I call the next morning to time block that to get it on the calendar? So you are always reflecting back and building out your calendar the next week. Good. That's great. All right. Anyone else have any questions? Uh, Stacy's got a comment. She says, I struggle with time blocking around vacation. How do you stay on task before vacation? I think that vacations are amazing because you are the most productive you've ever been right beforehand. So to me, um, 
you just, if you know that's coming, you're just going to line up all of the most important things that must happen before you take off. Right. Is that, yeah. I, well, Jenny, and I would say too, like if you're struggling with actually making yourself take the vacation time, or is it that you're struggling with the things you need to do to prep for the vacation personally? Like, I guess there's two different questions there that I'm wondering. Yeah. Can you take yourself off mute, Stacy? Oh, can't hear you. Let's see. Is it? Can you hear me now? Yes. Ah, hi. No, I have a tendency. So I, like, I'll know that I'm going on vacation and then I kind of just self defeat myself by going, oh, I have vacation coming up. So I don't want to get too busy right before I go because then I'll be killing my vacation. So I, I don't, it's just a weird mental issue I've got. I'm not sure. And unfortunately my husband and I, we, we, I'm, not, I'm grateful for it, but we take long vacations at least once or not, not long vacations, long weekends, at least once a month. So I get into this process where I kind of lose a week because we're going on a long weekend again. And it's, I don't know. Anyway. Okay. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So you're, you have, you have fear around it because if I talk to too many yes. people, I want to go look at houses this week and I won't be able to help them. Yes. 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 So what if you found some ideas or ways for time? I'll just tell you what I think instead of ask you questions, but what if you had people in your market center that are available to help out and you pay them by the hour or the house and you just leverage that off and then guess what? You still have a closing. You can afford to keep going on vacations. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's, that's the whole thing here. Yeah, no, I've totally done that. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. You don't want to get too busy. Yeah, I don't want the phone to be ringing off the hook. And it's but like, if you oh. know, but here's the deal. If you have worked your way through all of this and you know that you have a really big goal, you have to keep moving forward because if you keep taking weeks off, you're never going to get to your goal. Right. And that's exactly where I'm at. It's just such a start stop. I'm not getting into a good flow and just kind of starting to level out. So just find people to help you. Okay. Yeah. That was, don't forget about leverage. Age. That's okay. the band-aid I always used in my early days of, of leverage was, you know, who can help me for now? This doesn't have to be a forever relationship. Okay. And then you get to keep figuring it out. Then you'll get so busy, you'll start the hiring process and then you'll have those challenges. <laughs> <laughs> I got that. Right. Right. <laughs> so. Well, this has been great, Jenny. Thank you so much for all of this insight on goal setting. You bet. I love it. Thank you guys for smiling and letting me see you today and share with you. Just let me know if you need anything. Awesome. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Bye guys. Anything else? Got good stuff. Anything else, Jay? Yes. Um, I would love for either you or Jenny to pick a number one through three because I have assigned them to um, the people that are in our graduate community, and then we can give out the gift cards. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to let Jenny do that. I'm going to say number three, because that was a soccer number of mine when I was a kid. Okay. And then pick one more number, because we have one more gift card. So between one and three? Or two numbers between, sorry, one and three. So we have three. Okay. Uh, one, because there's only <laughs> one thing. <laughs> <laughs> there's only one thing. So with that in mind, we have Destiny Marshall and Brandon Thompson, who will be mailed a Starbucks gift card. Yay! Cheers. Um, that's what happens to people who show up. <laughs> Good job, guys. Awesome, you yeah. guys. Thank you so much, Jenny, for hosting the call. It was a very informative.